Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm. Kicking off day 28, working on a 96 Volvo 850 uh, T5 model. We're going to start off by changing the timing belt, a couple of mounts, tweaking a couple other things, and we'll just take it one step at a time. The timing belt was replaced, uh, we're not sure the mileage ago, but probably three, maybe four years ago. The water pump's been replaced, it looks like the tensioner has been replaced, and the idler. But we're just not sure how many miles on the vehicle, the uh, mileage is not counting right, the ABS module's damaged, there's a couple of lights out there so we're going to replace the ABS module with this one I was going to ship to Matt it has been remanufactured so it should be good see if that fixed the ABS issue and send that one to Matt and keep on going so let me get this timing aligned and get this belt pulled we're going to replace this serpentine belt it's probably got 50 cracks per inch which is our allowable limit and we're going to replace this uh, cabin air filter. Nobody wants the blue bonnet plug. We have the timing built off. Somebody marked the cam in the cam sprocket. So cam seals may have been replaced at one time. Doesn't look like my exhaust cam moved at all yet. We took the tensioner off. It's still nice and tight. We took the idler off. It's getting a little loose. The water pump appears to be aftermarket. Hopefully it's a HEPU but it seems to be okay. The lower engine mount is in good condition. So the owner is checking on a idler roller, see if he can get that. We wrapped the timing belt around the new one. It's four teeth shy, so it's the right size. And this is the condition of the old belt. Starting to get hairline cracks on it. Not the end of the world, but it's a good thing to change them. You don't want them to crack up and break on you. Didn't seem like the belt had a lot of tension on it, so I'm going to pay close attention to this tensioner as I crank it in to see if it leaks at all. If it does, I'll just chunk it in the trash and use one of the other ones that I have that are serviceable. And we get a treat. The owner's other vehicle is a panel van with an LT1 in it. Go, man, go. He's going to go get a couple of parts that we need, serpentine belt cabin air filter hurry back now all right since the back of the inner timing belt cover is missing this outer timing belt cover is getting cut up because it has nothing to clip in the back side of it somebody tried to bend it and curve it away from the uh, outer part and stuff like that but that timing belt inner cover does need to be installed Next, we're going to replace the upper firewall torque mount, and that mount is replaced by removing this uh, window cowl that goes across the base of the windshield, and then take the bolt out of the bracket here, take the two bolts out from inside that area, and then reinstall them. Very simple process. First thing I do is knock the two drain tubes loose. This one doesn't have the clamp, so it's easy. One on this side, one on that side. If you got the clamps, squeeze them in with your rag in a hand or some kind of pliers. Next, you want to take a 13 millimeter uh, ratchet and remove both of your windshield wipers. If they have the dust caps on them, go ahead and remove those. Next, you're going to remove these T25s that go across the front and lift this seal off of the trim piece and from around the fuse box. Go ahead and work that uh, cowling up from the front edge of it, slide it out from under the window seal, and then you'll have access to those bolts. After the cowl's removed, you do the 14 millimeter on the bottom of this from inside the engine bay and 15 millimeter nuts on this side this thing was vibrating very bad inside the car when you shift it in the gear. So you do want to check these, see if they're blown. If they are, replace them. 
put it in place and torque those two 15 millimeter nuts on there man I don't have the torque value but my guess is probably either 35 or 45 foot pounds we'll double check that and put it in the comments below okay we put a used poly mount there we got the new mount there we get all that stuff back in place we got the throttle cable back over the turbo tube but it had gotten tucked I'm getting ready to plug in this mass airflow sensor now we're going to take the ABS module out for repairs I'm not sure if this vehicle has tracks I don't think it does so we'll probably have to ship this in for repairs looks like it had a radiator replaced so we're going to tuck these fan shroud and relays back the way they're supposed to be it's common to see that thing disjointed a lot of people don't understand how that goes back together we replaced the lower torque mount transmission mount they call it so that's good next we're going to check all the vacuum routing on the PCV system and correct any of that that may be bad see that's that bad transmission mount if you can move that stuff with your fingers it ain't no good you need to get it off of there cause it's hard shifting right down there on the back of the turbo this hose coming off of here goes up and it goes in the front of your intake manifold in that lower section so that hole was open and it was plugged in to that vacuum tree there so we got that straightened out we're going to check some more of this turbo vacuum system the owner has been having issues with over boosting so him and his wife have been controlling it with their foot so they don't over boost and damage the engine i notice here that there's a bolt missing from the bracket that bolts into the head that's not a real big deal but that should be there but the main concern is that the turbo control valve which is here is hooked up properly well it's not it's got a a blue a red and a yellow uh, marks on there and those have to be hooked up properly the blue comes up to the air tube it measures the air from the mass airflow sensor to the turbo intake the yellow goes to the wastegate and the red goes to the bottom of the turbo which on this vehicle is disconnected it has two tubes actually hooked up to the air intake which throws off the computer's ability to read the pressure building in the turbo and is causing the car to overboost because it doesn't sense what the actual boost pressure is in the turbo in the turbo tube so when it senses that the pressure is at the programmed level which on this vehicle is around nine and a half it will open the wastegate actuator and bleed off pressure from the turbo which is not happening so we're going to uh, dig into this and put this together properly here you see it you have the yellow up top the blue in the middle and the red on the bottom so the yellow is supposed to go to the wastegate actuator the blue to the air tube and the red to the turbo uh, lower port at the bottom of the turbo which I don't see a line connected at all so I'm gonna have to dig for that and find it nothing on the bottom of the turbo and I'll try to take you down under the turbo and that's the empty port there that the line is supposed to be connected to to tell the computer what the pressure is in the turbo system and this turbo is pulling in a lot of oil and stuff probably because that stuff has not been connected properly so we're going to connect this properly take the car for a test drive see if it still tries to overboost hopefully there's nothing in that little port that's going to uh, cause any issues with it being dirty or whatnot the intake tube that's installed on this car is from a 97 98 version it's got this tube here which the 90 six cars 95 cars have no purpose for that should be capped off and it has two ports there which the 95 96 cars only use one so that top one should be capped off also this car was an early 96 
And like the 95, it actually had an EGR, but it appears that they maybe did an EGR delete on it. The EGR equipment is still down there, but the EGR valve right there, let me see if I can zoom in on that. It's capped off. That's the cap on the EGR valve. Also, there's no EGR equipment under the fan shroud that is supposed to be there. Since the turbo intake tube is off, I'm going to reach down in the intake of the turbo, which is right there, and I'm going to see if the turbo has any in and out shaft play, which is bad, and any side to side shaft play, which it should have minimal. So let me check this turbo since the intake is off. So the yellow is going to the wastegate. The red is going under the turbo where it's supposed to be. And the middle blue is coming up to the tube. So we're going to put the tube in, hook everything back up, take it for a test drive. Next we're going to hit this power antenna. You pull this insulation stuff back and the carpet back and unwind that antenna and unwind the broken piece out of the motor all right let me get it all right we got the fan shroud piece in place all the turbo stuff is good to go he's going to take the car for a test drive make sure everything works we got the throttle body cover on we we'll replace this light here on the corner because that lens had come off and it's just getting late he's going to take care of whatever we did and we got the important stuff done the timing belt and a few of the mounts and stuff like that so i'll be leaving charleston in a hour or two we're rolling the car is boosting nice and smooth no fuel cut off or nothing it's just acting really good we don't have any speedometer because the abs module has been removed for rebuild just in case you were wondering. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.